there are a whole host of things that the general public bring to us that are consistent misconceptions about the world of venomous reptiles in particular. I think the one that we are asked most frequently is, what is the most aggressive snake? What's the most aggressive snake that you work with? Which one of these snakes is the most aggressive animal here? We have completely steered away from the word aggressive. We try never to even use the word aggressive at the center unless we're correcting someone. Dr. Harry Green brought this up in a, a program that we would like to get across that doesn't seem to get across very often, is that snakes are defensive. They're not aggressive. Aggression is, is you know, I'd be walking in the woods and a snake would just out of the trees come down and grab me, and that doesn't happen. The misconception is that snakes are aggressive and they're out there waiting to kill us, and they're not. We work with taipans, black mambas, king cobras, Asian cobras, cotton mouse, rattlesnakes, many of the world's most dangerous reptiles. And what we consistently see and what we constantly find over and over and over again is that in fact they are remarkably shy, that they don't want anything to do with interaction, particularly with people, if they can help it. You don't have to worry about a black mamba chasing you down, black racer, or any other snake. That snake does not want to have anything to do with you. If I had a 20-foot python laying on the ground, you're standing erect in front of it, that snake thinks you're a giant. Snakes want to be left alone. They don't want to be interacted with, particularly from some giant creature that a person represents, even a child represents, to your average venomous snake. Some of them are favorites. Cottonmouths, we've heard all kinds of stories about. They tend to be a real favorite. Black mambas tend to be a real favorite. And we constantly say, defensive, 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 and in truth, if given the opportunity to go the other way or to not interact, every time they will take that opportunity. It is only when they are trying to be caught or captured or are cornered that they become an entirely different creature because in their minds they are fighting for their lives. There are all kinds of stories in folklore about Gila monsters. The Gila monster started out with a lot of misconception. I have newspaper articles from around 1900 or so where there was still discussion about whether or not this animal was venomous. That's quite a misunderstanding. 40 years or so after this thing was described to science and still nobody knew whether it was venomous or not. There's a long list of old wives tales about Gila monsters. Gila monster breath is poisonous. If you inhale their breath, it'll kill you. Um, fairy tale, obviously. Another very common one is that Gila monsters do not have an anus. Everything they eat stays inside of them and putrefies, and that's the source of their poisonous nature. So a bite from the Gila monster will kill you for that reason. Should I say obviously that's a fairy tale? You would think it's obvious, but I can tell you in the last five years I've received no less than a dozen emails from people with serious questions about that point. Is it true, they'd ask, that a Gila monster does not have an anus and that's why it's venomous? The only human fatality recorded is from about 100 years ago. And it, from the details of the story, it's more than likely that alcohol was involved in that death a little more than, than Gila monster bite. I don't know if you saw the other sign up there. It says, uh, if you don't have a picture, it didn't happen. Almost every day of the week, I hear about 12 and 14 foot rattlesnakes. I hear the story about the dead rattlesnake that was so long it touched the ground on one side of the hood, went all the way across and to the ground on the other side. And, and I, I always ask for a picture. The guy claimed to have chopped a rattlesnake in half with a, an axe or a shovel, and the two halves came back together and reattached themselves and the snake crawled off. Now, I don't know what was going on there, but I'm sure there was beer involved.